I bought my first electric vehicle back in 2020. In the past two and a half years, I put 56,000 miles on it and loved every minute of it. But in that time, we've had a pandemic and there's shortages of everything. And it got me thinking, are we seeing a step backward in the electric vehicle revolution with prices soaring, supply basically in such short demand that there's long wait lists for every EV out there? Are we going the wrong direction? So that's why I was really excited when VinFast reached out and said, how do you feel about coming to Vietnam and checking out our factory? And I said, yeah, let's do it because there's a couple of reasons why this company is doing the right things. And I believe it'll be ideas like this that will really get us back on track to see more affordable and a proliferation of electric vehicles. So let's jump into it. Every company and industry goes through a few phases. First, you start with an idea, form a business around it, and grow it as fast as you can. The next page in the playbook is to develop a technological moat, some business advantage that gives your company an edge and makes it nearly impossible to compete with you. Take, for instance, Apple's iPhone and Google's Android systems. It's not that there aren't other smart people with good ideas out there. The problem is that the moat Apple and Google have developed is so big that it's nearly impossible to cross. Even if you did build the next great phone platform, people are all but set in their respective ecosystems with their apps and their media. And well, it's why we have a two phone system. It's the same for the internal combustion engine car. Companies like Ford, BMW, and Mercedes have long reigned supreme. And with decades and sometimes a century lead in gasoline engine development, it's why we've seen so few new contenders. In fact, the only companies that have really broke through are companies like Honda and Toyota from Japan, and more recently, Hyundai and Kia from South Korea. But in the age of electric vehicles, the technological moat that the internal combustion engine held for so long comes crumbling down, or whatever happens to moats when they stop working. Vinfast is one of the first true examples of this because odds are you probably didn't even know that there were car manufacturers in Vietnam. And actually, VinFast started making gas cars. I saw quite a few during my trip, but quickly realized it would be better and wiser to invest in the future. In fact, VinFast's parent company, the Vin Group, is absolutely massive and makes up about 1.5% of Vietnam's entire GDP. And it's in the top 2,000 largest companies, according to Forbes. We stayed in several of the Vin Pearl resorts and even got to visit their pretty impressive mega city outside Hanoi. They do everything from housing and cars and media and marketing, shopping. And this, this is Vin University here in Hanoi. They're planning on building an absolutely world-class, state-of-the-art university here in Vietnam. And that's the thing about this company is, sure, they're new, but they did build gas cars for a while. They decided, screw that, we're going to go EV and they have major backing. Why does this matter? Well, this huge backing has meant that VinFast didn't have to play by the same rules as other startups. While companies like Rivian and Lucid have had to create very expensive, high margin, low volume cars to fund further development and market penetration, VinFast basically skipped that entire chapter and started right out on mainstream crossovers for everyone. Their big financial backing also means a massive state-of-the-art manufacturing plant in Vietnam where the first VF8 and VF9 EVs will roll out later this year. They have also started plans for their first North American factory in North Carolina. So VinFast doesn't just mean new jobs and opportunities for the Vietnamese people in Vietnam, but also thousands of new jobs right here in the USA. They're using a 2170 cylindrical cell for their battery strategy, which you probably know I'm a huge fan of. And they're partnering with Samsung SDI for future factories for their battery supply. They're actually even developing their own battery manufacturing in-house, and I'm sure we'll have more details on that in the coming years. When you get new cars from new car companies from new countries, you also get new ideas. One such idea is how you buy VinFast EVs. You buy the car, and then get a battery subscription. Let me try to break this down a little bit. Now, I don't work at VinFast, but I think I know what they were thinking. The average new car purchase in the US this year, believe it or not, topped $47,000 according to Kelly Blue Book. 
Interestingly, the VF8 will be priced around the low $40,000 range. Secondly, if you compare the VinFast VF8 to popular five-seater SUVs like the Toyota RAV4, Here's what the fuel cost would look like. With the average of 27 miles per gallon for the RAV4 and the average American fuel prices of $4.22 per gallon, based on the average of 12,785 miles a year driven, the RAV4 will cost you about $166.50 per month in gasoline. The VF8 with US average electric prices of 13 cents would cost you less than $45 a month. Remember that battery subscription model I mentioned earlier? Well, the unlimited driving option for the battery subscription would cost less than the fuel savings from switching to electric. I gotta tell you, in all my years on YouTube, no one has ever left a comment saying, I don't trust electric motors. I don't think they'll last. I don't think they're as good as gas engines. No one says that because electric motors are vastly superior to a gas engine and they can last like a million miles with minimal effort. But what I do see comments on quite a bit is concerns about battery degradation and longevity. Now I've made countless videos talking about this and why EV batteries will last just fine if you take good care of them. But I do understand that that is a sticking point for some buyers. And I think the VinFast model is something that is going to make a lot of sense for a lot of people. A second fresh idea I've seen from this fresh new EV company is a focus on software and especially how your smart EV connects to your larger smart home and smart life you can have multiple profiles. So if you see there is a guest profile, you know, anybody can walk in and have a guest profile. If you notice, I'm switching it to a real user. That was the guest, this is the real user. I have to enter the pin, okay? That this is how we secure the profile. But with a camera, I don't have to do that because camera knows that this is Sanjay or somebody, you know, he, it knows who's driving is gonna automatically switch the profile. So you don't have to go through all this process. of Whatever you can do from sitting in the car you can do the same thing like Wonderful. opening yeah. up the sunroof uh, i will try it uh, there you go it just oh, opened cool. up the sunroof um you know you you you, you are in a big um, mall is in u.s you have big malls and sometimes I, I i forget where, where did i park <laughs> my car yeah. so you can uh, you can either uh, flash it uh, i don't know if you will be able to yeah. capture it in the yeah. camera but it just flashed or you can honk it yeah right there there you go. Sorry, it's just me. <laughs> there is an app which is not installed here because we're not certified yet. Uh, what you can do is um, with this app, uh, you can uh, practically control any smart devices you have in the home, like light bulbs or or garage door opener, and you can open up the garage door, you can set your air conditioning, you can turn on the bedroom lights on before you arrive. Hey, been fast. Open the sunroof. So it will open up the sunroof for you. Hey, Vinfast. Tell me a joke. Why was the snowman sad? Because he had a meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's all great and all, but none of it really matters if the car isn't any good. So how'd I get on? All right. So here's a little acceleration test. I'm going to stop right here. Okay, I'm just going to confirm that we are in sport mode. We are. And creep is on and generous den was go off. Okay. And here we go. I'm going to floor it. Yeah, so this car, it's the, the mapping and the acceleration is definitely geared toward being smooth. And if you come from a gas SUV, it's going to feel quick and, and peppy. But I would love to see a, a faster mode where they, they map the, the motor output a little bit sharper to make it feel faster, but very competent. And here's, yeah, this is the body roll. I'll tell you, for a, for a big crossover SUV, it doesn't really feel like it. It's, uh, it's quite planted. There's a pretty high speed <laughs> U-turn. And I'm just gonna, let's, let's hit 120 here. We're at 100 kilometers an hour, 110. And there's 120. So, yeah, and even at high speeds, yeah, it's an SUV, right? There, it has springs, not air suspension. It's not dynamic. Here's a little brake test, by the way. That might be the best braking EV in this segment I've ever seen. So let's talk about expectations, what this car is and what this car isn't. This is not a performance SUV. This is a family cruiser. And as a family cruiser, it's really competent. I would say this car is better than it has any right to be. This is VinFast's first EV. And all that being said, they kind of nailed it. It's a 
it, it's exactly what you'd expect it to be. Comfortable, well positioned, you know, handles pretty nicely. Body roll is is pretty good. Again, it's a bigger SUV. But because that battery pack is on the floor, it doesn't feel like your typical SUV. I gotta tell you, I had just a blast in my week in Vietnam. I was really great to see the progress happening in the country and especially at VinFast. I feel like I've been predicting the rise of all sorts of new companies from new countries for a while now. And I think VinFast from Vietnam is the first of hopefully many more to come. This then is the electric revolution. And yes, we've had pandemics and supply chain issues and all sorts of things, but I do think that this too will pass and we'll see greater EV choices with different takes and different options from more and more companies. VinFast has a lot of work ahead of them to reach full scale production and pump out these EVs as fast as they can. But based on everything I've seen, I think they'll do just that. So that's a look at VinFast, a really cool, exciting electric vehicle startup that I'm really excited to have had a background behind the scenes look at. Huge thanks to VinFast for letting us out there and giving us access to the factories and everything else. Really appreciate you guys. And if you have any other questions about the car, let me know. I can reach out and try to get more information as time goes by. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm Ricky. This is Tuba Da Vinci. Catch you guys next week.